Hi guys, it's Sean from Melbourne Food Forest. Join me today on a walk around our winter garden. I'll show you some of the really interesting things happening, including what you can see behind me here. I'm standing in our bit of our citrus forest, so you'll definitely see lots of citrus. I'll show you what's going really well, what we haven't gotten around to do that we sh should have, and um, yeah, there's some really interesting developments too. So come walk with me. Now we have to start with some citrus. So these two mandarin trees are the absolute feature of our garden at this time of year. And it's easy to see why. They are studded with golden, gorgeous mandarins all over. And it, it gets so heavy that the whole tree starts drooping down and we start to lose paths because this is meant to be a path here. I'll show you in my attempt to walk through. But yeah, they're just so productive. And it wasn't always this way. I know when we first came here, they were the saddest trees and they actually stopped producing for about three years. So it's taken a while to rejuvenate the soil. This is always about the soil and to turn them back into this ridiculous level of productivity. So much fruit on there. Lots of it hasn't turned golden yet. So some of it has, um, and you can see it just pop off the tree. I'd say ones like this, where they're mostly orange already with just a slight smidgen of green. They're ready for picking and they will continue ripening off the tree. It will get sweeter and juicier. So for us, these trees, and I've talked about this before on my Instagram, this variety of mandarin has a condition where if you leave the fruit on the tree for too long, they actually dry and shrivel up. So it actually loses water over time. And you know when it's going to start doing that is when the color has fully changed. So this is not quite, so it's got a tinge of green here. I'm not sure if you can see. So some of them are getting close. Like this one is getting close and really needs to be picked. And so they will ripen off the tree. So you can pick them at a bit of green, but I try and push it as orange as I can for maximal flavor. But yeah, if you leave it too long, they'll actually dry out. So learn and know your variety of citrus. Some oranges will do that too. I think it was Washington Naval will do that. But Valencia can be left on the tree year round. So you just got to know your own varieties. Let me show you the path. Okay, so this is meant to be a path here, through here. But at this time of year, look, you got to um really bow down <laughs> um, or we just avoid this path all together and here as well oh my gosh i can't even get through like the tree just gets so heavy so heavy with fruit and variety i'm actually not too sure because these were planted before we uh, moved into this place they're super super sweet and juicy but quite pippy like lots and lots of seeds and it's not honey mercot i'm sure of that but we thought maybe imperial but not sure it is a great great variety and as you can see citrus trees are really ornamental trees like gorgeous gorgeous bark with glossy green leaves year round so evergreen tree be careful where you plant it you don't want to plant it on the north side of your garden if you're in the southern hemisphere like us in australia you will want to plant it on the southern side as it's year round green leaves it's going to block out light to the rest of your garden now we didn't plant these and this is actually towards our north border so we have to trim these trees back to keep them compact so they don't block out too much light but fortunately the mandarin trees i'll show you where they're positioned next to our fish pond and you don't want too much light um, in a fish pond because that creates algae growth so kind of having them here year-round is great for our fish pond as long as we keep it compact normally they're trimmed to like a beautiful little ball shaped but at this time of year you can see how wild wild it is because just so much fruit makes all the branches droop down but yeah you can see between these two trees we probably harvest um, about 500 mandarins like more i reckon just so much to give away to eat and you know make marmalades out of and we've actually got two other mandarin trees um planted in along the side of the house 
in terrible spots. So those ones actually are still productive, shockingly, despite getting no water, no sun. But yeah, so beautiful. And let me just turn around, turn around and show you the other citrus we've got going on here. So this is our feature grapefruit tree. It's a really beautiful tree. Again, planted before we got here, but I'm pretty sure it's a golden grapefruit. Could be marsh. Alrighty. Now, most of the fruit on this tree has already fallen off this year. I mean, you can still see there's heaps, heaps left. But I'd say about three quarters have already fallen off and we've already harvested, eaten, enjoyed, given away. Let me show you a crate of it too. Here's a crate of our grapefruits. We've harvested about 10 of these already. And people always ask, what do you do with them all? Well, we eat a few a day between a family of four of us. This is our vitamin pill for winter. You know, isn't it amazing? Nature gives us citrus just at a time when the kids are bringing back all sorts of viruses from school, over winter when your immunity might be low. Hello. No video complete without you, Panda. Um, immunity is low and you just need that boost of vitamin C. And yeah, that's where it is, packaged by nature. So we have a few a day, We've given heaps away to friends, neighbors, and family, and we will be making some marmalade as well with what's left. So no matter how much fruit you have, it makes you popular. Don't worry about having too much. So back to the tree. You can still this see there's heaps. So this variety seems to drop off the tree when it's ripe. Which is a pretty telltale sign and then we um you know have to go around and collect it and find it so from the bush around here this is um, the underplanting of the citrus trees which keeps them healthy and so at this time of year it's a bit bare and i chop and drop everything so you can see it did a massive prune of our kangaroo apple yesterday which we use as a mulch because it's such a fast grower and we've been chopping and dropping and adding heaps and heaps and heaps of um toppings for our soil to to build it up and then in in spring and summer this is all lush undergrowth on this side and over here let's have a look oh yeah that's what i wanted to show you this is our strawberry guava and if you haven't check out our other video just about this wonderful fruit now i've discovered something about it I didn't even know before but you know plants are changing they're always changing when they get happier they do different things right so with this strawberry guava it never used to fruit this much but it's so happy now so you can see even in winter got fresh fruit coming up we've got some ripened fruit that one's had a nibble out of it oh that's come off all right i'll enjoy that and you can see flowers all the way up here in winter these are the flower buds so this plant used to only fruit or flower in spring summer around then and now it's started to move to winter fruiting as well so it's basically year round it hasn't stopped you can see here lots of lots and lots of fruit so it's changed because it's happy in this spot it's microclimate under our grapefruit tree under kind of this way a bit so these ones, they can get big, but they're hedgy. So you can prune it to be the size that you want and the density that you want. And so that's actually really, really happy. And we, it looks like we're going to have year-round fruit. Oh, I just saw another one over there, that, another ripe one that we missed. And you can see how glossy and green it is. So that's pretty cool to be having strawberry guava, even in winter. Now over here, I want to show you, so some of this undergrowth, which is looking, not looking the prettiest at this time of year, this is pepino. So we had a few frosts last week and the week before, and that's why you're seeing all this discoloration on the leaves, because they've literally gotten burnt. So frost is just like, you know, burns, burns plants. And pepino is somewhat frost sensitive. It is, like it's going to bounce back. But if I had this in a super exposed spot, you might find it mostly all dies back and you want to mulch really heavily to protect its roots to make to get it through winter but for us we've got really free draining soil so they also don't like to be waterlogged we've got sandy soil in fact and it's planted again you can see the microclimate that we've got 
sort of under the grapefruit tree. It's very sheltered. So it's only had a little, little bit of damage. The pepino I've got elsewhere in the yard, I'll show you in a sec, that has had no frost damage at all because it's an even more sheltered location than this. So this, and you can see only this side is really damaged and burnt. And this is the side that's just outside the canopy of the grapefruit tree. Whereas you can see the stuff that's under the canopy looks pretty good. I mean, it's got whole snails have been going at it, but hey, it's distracted them from eating anything else. So, you know, you, you got to you got to be part of the ecosystem so you accept some nibbles here and there and i think i spotted some pepino fruit actually on our other pepino because this one's so shaded you can see it's a it's a tough spot in winter not going to fruit a lot but there's another one in a slightly sunnier spot and i'll show you okay see that up there that 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 little golden ball with stripes that is our pepino so this is where our other pepino is planted and those flowers are from our banana passion fruit. So let me show you how this is growing. I've talked about this in my other videos, but it's, it's a banana passion fruit that's holding up a pepino because pepinos don't climb. So you have a climber that um, holds up your non-climber because pepinos take up less room when they're grown off ground and it gives them more sun exposure which means more fruit. So this one's actually fruiting even in winter. And you can see why. Let me show you the position. Got this massive tree from our neighbor here, which love-hate relationship, mostly, mostly hate. Because um, <laughs> it just, look how big that is. It's like the biggest shade you can imagine for our yard. Like that's three quarters, like almost our entire yard in shade in winter I'll be honest so that's a source of frustration but it does create a microclimate that we can use and you can see we've got our shared wall here which is also a store of warmth because there's thermal mass thermal mass in the walls itself so growing the pepino and the banana passion fruit here you can see how well they do even through winter I do want to show you we're training the banana passion fruit to climb along the shed like this it's gonna be really beautiful because the flowers look like lanterns beautiful delicate pink lanterns and then we're gonna train it all the way around and it's gonna adorn the shed almost like beautiful lights hanging off it sort of glow and you can see I'll show you some banana passion fruit fruit the actual fruit so let's come around here and look we've training it to climb across this rope so it creates this beautiful beautiful dazzling hanging kind of effect it's so pretty how pretty are these flowers I reckon they're one of the more beautiful flowers even for an ornamental really nice and look look at the fruit look how much there is and this has all formed it over winter because this was just flowering. It started flowering in autumn and winter. Been flowering all winter, basically all year round, this passion fruit flowers. It's much, much tougher than your standard passion fruit, at least in our garden. I've killed countless, countless of those standard passion fruits, but this one is vigorous. It, it can be weedy in certain areas, not so much down south where we are in a temperate or cool temperate area, but in a warm area, I could imagine this becoming weedy because it, it's so lush, so vigorous. And yes, this is one vine, one vine, which starts from somewhere there. I planted this, been here maybe two years now, coming up to two years, not quite two years, but two years in spring. And I just spotted so much fruit. So let's have a look around here as well this is probably one of the bigger ones it's named banana passion fruit long banana like fruit when it's fully ripe it is really sweet it tastes to me fairly similar to normal passion fruit i mean i love passion fruit so i'm not the pickiest person it all tastes awesome to me but i love that long banana shape and just how prolific it is is a winner for me so you can see here more fruit on the way oh here's another one yeah and the flowers um there are male and female flowers so you need to encourage pollinators like bees and ants, even ants flies other insects they're all play a role 
in helping us to pollinate our plants. And you'll see some of the leaves have this almost yucky mosaic kind of look. Pretty sure that's a, um, I think it's a type of bacterial affection potentially, but I tend not to get too worried about things and I don't spray like crazy. So I, we, we run an organic garden, of course. So we do the minimal possible and we observe nature. So what we're gonna do with these is we'll remove them and we'll observe see if it comes back see if it affects the rest of the plant because what i suspect is often in winter for tropical plants they can you know look a bit sad look like they're diseased they'll drop some leaves it's just natural it's their reaction to the temperature because these are really warmer climate plants so we'll, we'll give it a chance to recover and see what happens that doesn't look like it's suffering at all to me <laughs> Now this might not look that impressive at this time of year, but we are pretty chuffed to have raspberries all winter. This is our heritage raspberry, which you can see in our full berry tour. And, you, and when it comes to spring, it's completely covered in fruit. We harvested so much last year that I've still got boxes full in the freezer. It's just amazing. And so we have been enjoying this all winter at about a handful of weeks, so not a lot, but can't complain that it's produced for this long you can see a bit more new fruit there but yeah it does drop bare at this time of year the raspberries and for me lots of people ask me about raspberry and berry pruning and it can be really tricky depending on what variety you have because some fruit on second year cane some fruit on first years so with pruning you got to know your stuff you don't want to be pruning out good shoots you want to actually prune out dead shoots so winter can be a good time to do it because you can see yeah look you can see when something's dead it's dropped all its leaves so it gives you the structure and you can see the branches really well so i think we're about to do a prune soon so you can see the dead branches they look hollow and dry and you snap it it's dead and compare it to say this one look, look at this can you see that when i scratch that bark back it's it's green that's the that's layer under the skin that tells you that's living whereas look at this i mean i don't even need to scratch that but i will just do it to prove the point there's nothing there this is a hollow dry twig so that's it this is the cane that's done fruiting and needs to go so it's really easy to prune at this time of year if you're you know not confident at all like this this seems really easy but just wait till spring these ones will start to produce shoots and I can already see that that's budding up. So the live canes will produce new shoots. The dead canes are never going to produce again and you just prune them out. It's that easy. So I don't get too stressed about my berry pruning. My berries tell me what need to be pruned. Now I want to show you our banana plant. This grows between our water tank deliberately white to reflect light to these dark corners and the store of water which is pretty full at the moment because we have had a lot of rain this winter helps to create a microclimate for our banana plant so this plant has is about two years old i've heard that it takes two to three years at least for bananas to fruit in melbourne it has really really blossomed though in the past six months so i think it's getting close this could be our season the top few leaves haven't looked pretty since the frost of last week it actually looked magnificent um, all winter before these frosts but it's what you expect um, these leaves may die off or we might cut them but don't cut them yet because there's more frost on the way and the frost damaged leaves uh, leaves actually help protect the the rest of your banana plant or your whatever plant you've got so don't remove them because they're ugly they're actually performing a function there and they will either drop off or we'll cut them off once the weather gets warm but you can see how that's looking pretty happy this is a dwarf cavendish banana see how when the leaves weren't destroyed yet how beautiful that is that is mammoth in size so it's really happy and what i've done is just top up the soil ridiculously here with as much organic matter as I could find. That's what we do in winter. have bags of leaves I collected last year that have mostly broken down. Coffee husks, compost, 
all sorts of things, food scraps, everything buried here. And you can see you always leave a baby. Only one though. So if it produces more babies, you take that away, but you leave one because once the mama plant fruits, she dies, you cut her down. So you want a replacement that's coming up in that spot. And so that baby's gone from teensy tiny last year. Now, I don't even recognize it. It's getting big itself. And of course, we have our um, overflow for our tank. Excellent makeshift plumbing that comes here. But to be honest, we don't get a lot of overflow, only a bit in winter, and that helps to wet all these leaves and help that top layer break down. Let me show you here. Oh, Panda, you're hungry again. Come on. Let me show you this. This is really interesting. Now this is our kiwi berry plant. Does not look like much at this time of year, but look at those little twirly things. It's a really good climber and it gets quite high. You can see that. For us, this is the barometer for when spring is coming. I mean, we know spring's coming, but you can tell temperatures have increased because this is one of our earliest sprouters. Look at that. It's already got green shoots ready to go. This bounces back. For our dormant plants, this bounces back the earliest. So it clearly grows in quite low temperatures. And it's also the way we tell when the right time is to spray our peaches and nectarines, stone fruit. So if you plan to spray your peaches for leaf curl, then this is the time. And our kiwi berry tells us, because that's telling us that yet yeah, bud burst is close. So you need to spray your stone fruit at least, um, you know, a month, two weeks before bud burst. You don't want to wait until it has already sprouted because that's too late. So um, our kiwi berry, which starts to produce shoots earlier, much earlier than our stone fruit, tells us now's the time to do our first round of spraying if we want to. Now, let me just talk about this a bit. If you haven't grown kiwi berries before, they are so worth growing. Kiwi fruits, as you may have heard, need a male and female vine and they can get huge. They need a massive trellis to climb. They're really vigorous. Whereas kiwi berries are really delicate plants. They produce these miniature fruits about this big that look just like a kiwi fruit, but hairless. So you eat them skin and all. They're much sweeter and they have this amazing fruity taste. So I would highly recommend a kiwi berry. We don't grow any kiwi fruits. We just don't have the space to give them the respect that they need um, and the room to flourish here. It's chocker blocks in the food forest. But kiwi berries, we've got two of them and one of them here growing up the back wall of our shed. And let me just show you this positioning. Okay, so here's where it is. Back wall of the shed. That's that huge tree again. That's north. So it really doesn't get a lot of direct sun, yet it still performs pretty well. It's starting to kind of climb all the way up there. And so kiwi berry does not need a male and a female, unlike kiwi fruit. Kiwi fruit, um, you need two vines and um, they've got to cross pollinate. And kiwi fruit is such a vigorous plant, you will need a massive, massive trellis to have your male and female plant. And you need to make sure they're both healthy because if one dies, the male dies or the female dies, of course you're not gonna get fruit. So kiwi berry, this variety is called Isai, I-S-S-A-I, -S -S and it is self-pollinating. And it is a much more delicate, tame vine. You can see here, got it up the back of our shed wall and there she is, you can see her shoots going up here. And the leaves are really beautiful. I can't wait to show you when she shoots. Um, leaves are not far off. You can see they're so green already. And I'm hoping that she takes over this side of the shed wall. And then here, we've got another passion fruit that we're trying to get going. That's our newly planted passion fruit, which I just planted this winter. Uh, it's see, I had it there in a pot and it seemed to do well. I wasn't planning to plant it here, but it started to put its roots out from that pot. So I literally just had to plant it here. Um, and we'll see how this goes because uh, as I've said, I've killed many passion fruit, but this one seems to be happy here, even though it's such a shady spot but yet I guess it's quite sheltered and warm and the warmth is really important to them. 
That's all we have time for today. There was just way too much to cover. So I have split this um, fruit tour into two parts and we will re be releasing part two shortly. So stay tuned for that because in there you'll see our amazing babaco. Here it is by my side, which is impressive in all seasons, including in winter in Melbourne, and it's meant to be a subtropical plant. Anyway, um, you will see that in part two. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment below, subscribe to our channel, and share with your friends, um, as that really helps to support us and enables us to keep making tutorials like this. So really appreciate your time, um, and stay tuned for part two.